So the Steam Deck, it's a beast of a device. It works great for playing your PC games, especially your Steam games. And we've talked many times about the Steam Deck's penchant for emulation. And that's one of the things that it's really good at. But it can also be a bit overkill in some scenarios. So what if you want to emulate games, but on a tighter power budget? What if you want to play your favorite retro games in a bit more of a pocket-friendly form factor? Enter the Retroid Pocket 3. Now, I had heard a lot of people talk about this device, and I decided to give it a shot for myself. So how does the Retroid Pocket compare with the Steam Deck? Well, let's just say they go hand in hand. But before we get into that, let's talk about today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers boxes of top shelf goods from brands you may or may not have heard of. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. As a small business owner, I love that Bespoke Post purchases 90% of their products from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces their members to great new products like outdoor gear, barware, home goods, clothes, and even more. Each box has about $70 worth of goods, but it only costs you a fraction of that price. And what's even better is that your boxes will be based on your answers to the preference quiz, so you get what you actually want. You also get a preview of your box before it ships, so you can keep it, swap it for another box that suits your fancy, or skip the whole month for free. That way you only pay for what you want. I personally was interested in the Forge box, which features the Mini Hunter Damascus Steel Knife, as well as the Weekender box, which comes with a durable Weekender bag that's great for traveling. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter the code GARDENER20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash GARDENER20, and thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. So let's start with talking about what the two devices are, and you can tell just by the name. The Retroid Pocket 3 is built for retro video games, and as a bonus, you can play Android games. That's right. See, the Retroid Pocket is basically an Android tablet with built-in hardware controls. The Retroid Pocket 3 has a Unisoc T310 CPU and a PowerVR GE8300. My model has three gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and a 4.7 inch 1334 by 750 P touchscreen. And it all ships with Android 11. Plus it has just about every uh, standard button that you would expect from a modern video game controller. Four face buttons, four shoulder buttons, uh, a D-pad, start and select buttons, and clicky analogs. Though due to the size of this device, the analog sticks remind me of the PlayStation Vita or the Nintendo Switch uh, Joy-Con controllers. They're about the same size, and personally I find them a little bit on the small side. It also has all the buttons that you would expect from an Android device a physical home button on the right grip, volume controls on the left, and a power button on the top. Other hardware includes a microphone, a USB-C charging port that also doubles as a standard USB port, an SD card slot labeled TF card for some reason. It's got a micro HDMI port that's only capable of 720p and a TRS style headphone jack. What courage. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck is about six times the size of this device. It has a more ergonomic feel, a screen that dwarfs the pocket's entire frame, and has a nearly quadruple spec bump in every category over the Retroid. Plus, the Steam Deck runs uh, SteamOS 3, which offers much greater compatibility with more games than you could ever get on an Android device. And let's not forget about the price difference, too. The Steam Deck starts at $399, the Retroid Pocket 3 starts at $119. So I wouldn't really say that these two devices are in the same weight class. And that's okay, because I see these two machines as complementary to each other. And hear me out on this. First of all, the Steam Deck is massive. It is huge. And while I can fit the deck into one of my man-sized pockets, I definitely don't want to, for a myriad of reasons. For me, the Steam Deck is a device that is meant to be enjoyed in luxury, laying on my sofa or in a hotel room, etc. And it's meant for serious gaming. This is a console first, I feel. At least for me, it's not really a device that lends itself to being played in public. Yeah, I've played it on a plane, but getting it in and out of my bag was a bit of a hassle, especially when you consider that the included carrying case barely fit into my bag to begin with. 
However, the Retroid Pocket 3, again, in its name, it's only slightly larger than my daily driver Android phone. So I can fit it into my pocket or much more easily into a backpack and playing it in public makes a lot more sense. And that's how I've found myself using it. So if you're gonna be on a long trip and you wanna play games while you're out and about, bring both. That's my honest to goodness opinion. You can load up your favorite ROMs and ISOs on the Retroid Pocket and then play them on the go on the Pocket and leave your Steam Deck in your room to unwind at night. But how is the gaming experience on the Pocket 3? Well, that's a question that I haven't answered yet, but first I need to ask you a question. Are you enjoying this video? Do you believe in the work that I'm doing? Why not like that smash button and smash that subscribe button? Those are just two of the ways that you can exert a morsel of control over the YouTube algorithm and also stay up to date with all the fun and exciting stuff that we're doing here on the channel. And thanks. So how is the gaming experience? Well, you have the usual selection of Android games, pretty much anything that you can get from the Google Play Store, as well as the aforementioned emulation options. Many of the most popular emulators are available. You've got Duck Station for PS1, PPSSPP for PlayStation Portable, Dolphin for GameCube and Wii, and RetroArch for SNES and a huge number of other systems. Now, admittedly, the Retroid Pocket 3 can't really muster a playable frame rate with Dolphin, which is pretty high-end emulation, and I think that was to be suspected. But PSP emulation is truly impressive to see on this device, and so is PS1 emulation. The rest of it is as you'd expect, though. The games play incredibly well in all but the odd edge case, and that's great. So, in truth, this little handheld can get a lot done in terms of gaming, but there are a few drawbacks. First, and most irritatingly, the audio. The sound coming from the built-in speakers is particularly tinny. It has no bass whatsoever and can only barely be described as serviceable. Most phones have already solved this issue, so why not here? Well, I think it might have something to do with the $119 starting price. This thing is inexpensive at best, so the speakers are fine for what they are. Plus, they're a good match for classic Game Boy emulation. Next, the screen. Now, there's nothing wrong with the screen itself. It's crisp, the colors are beautiful, the resolution is perfect for a device of this size. But the fact is, this is an Android tablet, essentially, and Android wants to be in portrait mode. Sure, you can run apps in landscape, and most will try their best to run in landscape, but many apps just won't provide an ideal experience in landscape mode. I'm looking at you, YouTube. And, you know, if you want to run the device in portrait mode, that's also less than ideal. The ergonomics just aren't there for this thing. And that leads me to my next issue. It's running Android. Now, don't get me wrong, Android is great. I'm sorry, I, I can't say that with a straight face. No, Android is not great. It's an okay operating system for phones. Like, it gets the job done. But it sits in this awkward middle ground of being a task-specific OS, more like an appliance, and a general purpose OS. See, I hold the Retroid Pocket in my hands and its form factor suggests a streamlined software experience. Instead, Android provides a clunky, unoptimized UI that does not know how to behave without its expected controls. Much like Windows, but where Windows expects a keyboard and mouse, Android expects a home and back button readily accessible at all times. And it's not just the OS either. Most of the apps expect a back button as well. So getting into a game or an emulator, you'll be remapping the B button to something other than back, which means that in many cases, I struggle to find a way out of the emulation and back into the app menu. Now compare that with the SteamOS experience and the dedicated Steam Deck UI. It's a rare occasion indeed where I've felt the need to find other means of interacting with the device. The gamepad controls suit the UI, and the UI suits the controls. It's a coherent experience. And that's yet again another reason that I feel the Retroid Pocket and the Steam Deck complement each other so well. They're quite different devices that achieve similar ends. So if I'm out on the run and I'm not carrying a backpack or a bag, and I just want a convenient pocket-sized device for some light gaming, I'm bringing my Retroid Pocket. But for everything else, I'm going with the Steam Deck. But what do you think? Have you given the Retroid Pocket 3 a go? Leave me a comment and let me know how you feel it stacks up against the Steam Deck. I'd love to hear from you. 
I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I've been able to continue growing this channel into what it has become. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, you can become a Steam Deck Warrior. Make sure you use the links below to pledge your monthly support and thanks. That's going to do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.